Hello everyone, today I'm really pushing myself to the limits to create these next level hydrangeas. These pouring techniques are actually easy and fun and I almost can't believe the results. Let's get right into it. I've been receiving many requests for different flowers now and I'm extremely grateful. Thank you so much. I made the whole list and some of the requests are yeah, pretty challenging, I must admit. And just looking at the colors today, can you guess what I'll be trying to attempt? Because I think it's going to be one of the hardest. I'm going to try hydrangea flower. I looked online and I saw the colors and what well, I know the plants, they are beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So let me try and see how that's going to work. Let me start with this. I mix my purple with blue to create a lighter sort of lilac color. And I'm just going to make some dots. Not sure how big I want those petals to be. It's a nice color by the way. They should be a bit more pointy. I'm just going to use a needle. So if I pull them here, they should be joining in the middle. I think that's pretty nice. Okay, so now I need to make a uh, hundred or fifty of these, don't I? This is probably the most unusual flower painting you've seen. I mean, I have never seen anybody doing that, but I really enjoy those acrylic skins, you know. Uh, I mean, I just want to say, for, for those of you who maybe don't know me, I'm an art teacher and I do use brushes. Yes, I do. I could paint those flowers and, to be honest, that will probably be easier for me. But I think it's more fun trying to find different ways and experimenting to see how, how far we can actually stretch pouring. My lovely followers send me pictures to Instagram and I share them with everyone. And what I've noticed is that you, you make amazing stuff inspired by my videos and it makes me so, so, so happy. Just shaping those little petals, enjoying myself. It's very peaceful. I love them. I absolutely love them. I'm so happy. Thank you so, so much. I, I'm, I'm really sorry I forgot. I couldn't find the name of the person who wanted hydrangea, but you know who you are. Now I add it a bit more pink. Just a tiny bit. Not much of a difference, but when they are next to each other, you, you see. I think I need to order another another one of those silicone mats. I'll, I'll be able to make various petals or various flowers at the same time. Time for some pinky ones. So I added a bit of rose into this dirty cup. So it's a mix of purple and pink now. I think it's important that you see the hint of this, the same colors in each one, even if predominantly there's just one. So what I'm doing now, I'm just making them half-half, multicolored. I think that will look very nice. A bit of pink, a bit of purple. I might add some other colors as well in a minute. So you can see, so when you join them, colors blend a bit, especially in the middle, which is what I wanted. <laughs> it's an hour later, I just can't stop. I don't know what's wrong with me. I mean, I know what's wrong with me. Every time I create another shade, I love the last one so much that I want to do more, and I just can't stop. Okay, I think I might stop now. It's so much fun, I mean, for me. This is the next day. Look how awesome. <laughs> I love them. They are so amazing. So now I've decided to change some of the colors just very, very gently. So if I think they are too purple, I'm just adding, just touching them with a brush, you know, just changing them ever so slightly. So if you want to, you can change some of the petals, make some of them lighter, darker, a bit of touching up, but it's not necessary. I think I'm quite happy with them. Now, as I usually say, the most fun part for me, which is peeling off my creations. In this case, it will take some time, but it's going to be fun. See how easy they come off. 
Very easy. There you go. One done. 100 to go. Well, don't you worry, I am not going to keep you while I'm peeling so many of. That's the second one. And then I'm going to put some music on or listen to podcast and then see you in... Do you want to guess how many minutes? Let's have a little game. So it's 18 past nine. It's actually super quick, as you can see. Just done the last one. So it was 18 past and now we've got 34 past. So I did it in, yes, 16 minutes. Now for the colours in the background. I'm going to use similar colours as you can see in the hydrangea blossoms. So what I was looking at, it was this deep purple. I've got the rose and this is electric blue. However, I want them much lighter. I want them heavily uh, tinted with white. So this is my white acrylic here. Now this is the normal consistency for my paints. This is an uninterrupted stream running down and a little build up. This might be even tiny bit too thick. And if it's too thick, what I do, I just spray some water. So I have one part of paint here to one part of my pouring medium, which is PVA glue and water to that mix. I just add, I actually am eyeballing, I'm not really measuring, but I think it's around 30% of the mixture is floral. So this is my mix. However, for the background, not only I'm going to add lots of white, but I'm going to add lots of water. I want the background as runny as possible. So from these paints, I created these here. So I added those two together and I created this um, sort of a warm purple. This blue, I've already added white. And I also have those two interesting colors. This is lavender. These are pre-mixed Artes Acrylics. And I've got this new sea green that I think will look beautiful in the background. I want pastel colors. So first of all, white. Of course, you can create your background with whichever color you wish. Th th these are just my choices for today. All right. And here, and this is a bit of blue with a bit of purple together. It's an, an interesting color, kind of similar, but I think this one is a bit warmer. Well, in the end, I've decided that the background would benefit from some subtle pink as well. So I added pearl rose quartz. Oh, by the way, this is the flow troll I use. It says Overtroll, but here it says flow troll is the British version. It's a bit different to the American one and different to the Australian one. My white this time is heavy body acrylic by my Artscape. Very well pigmented paint. Uh, so you get, it's not a big jar, but you get lots of coverage. I said lots of water, didn't I? And I mean it. So now there's no build up just basically almost like water. I don't I don't use that regularly, this consistency. This is especially for this this type of background. I used it in the previous video that I made uh, with the hollyhock. That's very popular. I'm very happy that you enjoyed this one. A long canvas, 50 by 20. I'm just going to coat it with white so that my colors will glide on easily. That's all the leftover white. Well, hopefully that's enough. Maybe one day I'm just going to get rid of this sparse paint syndrome. I can see a couple of bubbles. So just hold them. Oh, you often ask me what this thing is. This is chef's torch. Uh, for like creme brulee, you know, just a cooking chef's torch. Now, how do I want my colours to go? I'm not sure. I just want some kind of a, like a sky here. So a bit of blue in this section. And now random colours. Are you ready for my crazy device? If you watched the previous video, you know what I mean. 
I made this silly silly nozzle that actually fell off halfway through the video but it works much better than the original nozzles for my hair dryer so but I, I don't recommend making that it's it's dangerous it's sharp the lower setting ready steady go Oh my goodness, how did I manage to do that? Because I was pushing this way. Now, which parts do I like, which parts I don't like? More blue here. Definitely too much of this thing. More blue here. More pink here. Okay, it's better, but we've got one hole. <laughs> well, I don't remember creating such a mess. It's because of the hairdryer, but I'm collecting it for another background. Okay, once I clean it, I'm going to actually touch the edges as well here at the same time. So this is ready. I'm pretty happy with the colours. Now I'm going to show you how beautiful the side looks. Just the edge. Look at that. Same colours. So it's really well covered. Now I've collected that much paint. Not much, but that's it. There will be an interesting background for another painting. I have lots of questions. What do you do with leftover paint? I do keep it. I cover it. And I keep it for, for a couple of weeks. I try to use it up, but I, I usually have some left over. So, and those crazy containers, you know, I've got, I've got the lid from cosmetic products and all kinds of yogurt jars. I just utilize everything. So leave it to dry. Oh my goodness, it's quarter past 12. And I've got lessons in the morning. So time to finish. Now I will be putting all the pieces of the puzzle together. So I'm just making this area wet with the same paint. And I'm picking the flowers that will go at the bottom. So these will be quite sparse, just like this. They will get stuck to the paint. So this will be my first layer. Well, I'm just hoping it's going to work. This is my first time in my, one of my crazy experiments, so why not? And because I'm using the same paint, they are going to get stuck perfectly. You see, I put them in groups, the pinky one, the bluish ones, and the darkest ones, so I kind of know what I'm doing. When I'll be honest, I kind of never know what I'm doing. I am really expecting it to work, but it won't be fun if I was completely sure what will happen. Okay, let's just speed up. Now I had a thought, maybe I should actually shade this first layer down with a bit of black. So that it's kind of darker. I'm not sure if it's the best idea but I'm going to try it. So I'm just going to use a little bit of black and some water. And that's it, nothing else. Just like this, can you see? And I'll just go over these flowers. And they look dirty at the moment but don't worry. <laughs> now I'm ready to glue the final part, the, the ones that I actually want to be seen. I'm using PVA glue now. And really quickly attaching the blossoms. I 
I think this is going to be the last one. Look at the colours. <laughs> wow. I've decided to add a couple of highlights before adding the mid part, just because there'll be like a white dot in the middle. I was going to use white, but I have a leftover pink. So I'm using my very, very old trusty brush, just adding a bit of a pink edge just to some of them to create a bit more of a contrast. Not everywhere, just, just a little bit. I'm happy with the first one. So quickly, a smaller one. Uh, somewhere, somewhere here, I think roughly this size. Again, I'm, I'm trying to choose the ones that are not so pretty, but they're all similar. So this is going to be my background. I think that's it. That's, what, that's the background layer. And again, this time, just a little bit of grey with, with lilac. I'm covering the first layer, just to mute it a bit. I must say that I'm personally, I'm really enjoying the series, the next level series. And I love the fact that, especially as an art teacher, that I'm actually breaching the gap here and, you know, towards fine art and introducing, you know, different techniques, different ways of pouring and painting. And from what I've seen, you know, from your lo the lovely pictures that you send me, so many of you, I'm so happy that you actually take everything on board, you try my techniques and with amazing results. If you want to see some of the work done by lovely followers, uh, join me on Instagram and every Friday, I call it the Fun Friday, um, I share your work and I love seeing what you come up with, I absolutely love it. The last thing to finish these off would be just a little dot in the middle because they tend to have like a little tiny whitish or lighter spot. So one is very, very faint lilac and the other one a bit of pink in white. And I am going to use a pin, that's some paint. I think you will agree with me that each of the paintings in my next level pouring series looks quite accomplished and perhaps looks quite complicated. But when you follow my steps, you actually notice that it's doable and it's much easier than you think. So that, that was my goal, to achieve something you'll be very proud of. It will look quite complex, but anyone can do it. Blossoms are ready. I'm going out to find some hydrangea leaves as it's winter, but I hope there will be still some alive somewhere in my neighbourhood. So see you soon. People in London must love hydrangeas because there, there were quite a few shrubs near me. These are some leaves. So it'll be easy to print them. Very nice shape. And I love the veins. However, I'm going to get make them a bit darker because various shrubs have various shades of leaves. It's amazing, some of them are so fresh. Even though it was minus one today. I'm going to use the chain, the ball chain, to create the stem first. Of course you can use a brush, but because most of it is done by pouring. That, that's why I just, it's, it's more fun. That's how I want this one to be. Green bits coming off the main stem. There you go. So one done. When using chains, don't forget to have a container with water so you can just drop it in and your little balls don't get dried up, they don't get clogged. I'm wiping this section, I can even use my finger. I don't want too much paint. I'm trying to join this section to the main stem. Just a little bit, there'll be plenty of leaves here, so I just want to know where the main stems are. So. Okay, so this is an offshoot of the bigger one. As I showed you in my last video, if you use a brush and just wipe off some of the paint in the middle, that straight away creates some contrast and your stem will look more 3D without adding any color or anything else. So you see that? It looks like I at least used two different shades, but I didn't. Now another useful trick, because this is going to be my main color for the leaves, but I want some leaves in the background. 
So I want some light and darker to create a 3D effect. So I'm going to use a bit of this plus white. So this is titanium white. Taking some of this green and mixing it together. You may create as many mid-tones as you wish. So ready for the first leaf. I pick this one, not a huge one, one of the smaller ones for the background here first. And I'm using my brush and basically covering the leaf with paint. It's good to have a paper towel nearby so you don't get your hands very dirty. And we press the leaf down. As I said, I want it somewhere, somewhere here. Don't worry, yes, I'm covering the blossoms now. I'm trying not to, but we'll clean it. Put some leaf on it. Okay, I think I'm going to add the top from another one because this one miss. I think the top was missing. All right, that's good. Now quickly clean this section because obviously the leaf is not seen on the petals, it's underneath. You can play with the leaves, you know, as you wish, however you want to position them. Printing is always great fun, in my opinion. Oh, that, that's much better. So if we wipe this section here, that's exactly what I wanted. I think that this method will always give you amazing results and what's most important, the right shape. You don't have to worry that the leaf will look different. So what I've done now, I've just actually cut the nasty little one in half and we'll, we'll try to print it again. Now I think I want quite a big one here. I didn't want the endings to be seen because they are very characteristic. Maybe even this. Oh, that's the easiest. <laughs> that's the easiest way. Yay, perfect. Nice and clean. And I think I'm done with the lighter ones, so I'm just going to add a couple more darker leaves. It's important to think of a composition, so I, I desperately need another one somewhere here. Again, I cut a half of a leaf and I just want to add one here. I'm going to repeat the same one here, but bigger sideways and now with darker paint. Oh, by the way, the previous ones, they're almost dry. So quick with printing with acrylics. When you print with printing ink, it takes at least a day or two to get the dry. I do quite a lot of printing at school, especially street art. See the difference, the contrast. Oh, nice. Yes. I think this is going to be my last leaf. Oh yes. <laughs> There's one problem. I don't want the stem to be seen now. So what shall we do? I'll just add a bit of paint over it. Well, there you are. I've done quite a few flowers in the Next Level series, but I feel that this one pairs with last week's hollyhock. I wonder which one is your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. If it's your first time watching, please consider subscribing. I have a new video every Saturday. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.